Hey guys, it's Amber from NotableInk.com. Welcome back and welcome to the all to new July 2020 stencil release. I have some creative stencil use for you today as well as some new products that I'm sharing too. All to new just released creative cutouts and we have some new enamel dots also. I'll do a quick run through of the new products that I'm going to use today. This is Trellis Stencil, which pairs beautifully with all sorts of projects. This is the Mountain Scene Stencil, which I think is really unique and I absolutely loved it so much more than I thought I was going to. Feathery Stencil, this creates beautiful card panels, whether you use the whole image or just part of it. Here are the new enamel dots. We have Seashore, Tropical Forest, Shades of Purple, and Warm and Cozy. Next up, we have a brand new line called Creative Cutouts, and these are 80 pound white cardstock. These are laser cut into specific shapes. This one is nested wreaths. So you have three different sizes of wreaths in here. Um, this is the medium and the smallest one. I'm kind of showing you how thick they are. Um, they're white on both sides and it almost has like a brownish or craft colored edge around the where it was laser cut. So I'm going to watercolor these. Now I've not used these before so I was curious to see how they would color up. And I thought watercolor would be good because you don't have to do a lot of firm pen strokes on them like you might have to do with color pencils or something like that. So I have the Tropical Fiesta watercolor brush markers here and I'm just adding Sweet Leaf and Lime to this. And then as a third color, I'm also going to add some turquoise and of course I'm just going direct from the brush to the cutout here. Now this one became pretty solid in color. I'm gonna move this off to the side with my tweezers to dry. Then rather than wiping up this beautiful ink that I have down here, I'm gonna spritz it with some water and I'm gonna drop the larger wreath into that to do some ink smushing. So the majority of these leaves will be still be white with a bit of color here and there. And while I don't end up using this particular, the larger wreath in the projects today, I end up ink smushing one of the smaller wreaths in the same manner. And that's what I'm gonna use and you can see that here. You do wanna be careful about how much water you add to these because they're not meant to be watercolored per se. So they're not gonna be able to handle a lot of water. Next up, I have Mega Label Love, which is amazing. I've stamped it in obsidian ink and I'm gonna do some ink splatter with the Jet Black Ink Spray. I've knocked off the majority of the ink back into the bottle and I'm just kind of tapping the nozzle onto the um, cardstock to get some ink. I decided I wanted a little bit of black splatter on the wreath as well, so I've just laid that over. After it dries, I'll glue the dark green wreath directly to the card panel and I'll pop up the light green wreath and I'll add some of the lighter tropical forest enamel dots to finish off the card. Here you can see the dimension and I love the shadow that the popped up layer casts. Next up, I'm gonna use the feathery stencil and to start off with, I'll spray the back of the stencil with some pixie spray. Make sure that you do that in a well ventilated area. I'm gonna use a piece of the watercolor paper set, also from All to New. And I'm gonna make sure I have the stencil adhered firmly to the front of this watercolor paper. I'm gonna switch over to the Spring Garden watercolor brush marker set and I'm using Sea Breeze, Evening Gray, and Emerald. I'm gonna spray the panel with some water and then I'll go ahead and put a bit of each of the pigments onto my work surface here. This is a glass mat and I have the all new stamping mat underneath it. And then I'll just plop on the color in different areas. I want a little bit of mixing of the colors, but not too much. I want them to be, be able to retain their natural color. I'll go ahead and peel off the stencil while the panel is still very wet and I'll let that air dry. So I just set it aside to let it air dry. And then I added a die cut sentiment and heat embossed sentiments from the Mega Greetings 2 Stamp and Die Bundle. Seashore enamel dots finished off the card and I love how these colors mixed and created such beautiful texture. For the next card, I'll put small puddles of Midnight Violet and Emerald watercolor brush markers onto my glass mat surface and I'm gonna mix some all to new embossing paste with each one of those. 
Now these watercolor brush markers are crazy pigmented. So this is going to be super vibrant embossing paste, you guys. Like crazy. You know, if you just ink smush like one of your ink pads on your surface and you mix your embossing paste with that, you typically get a pastel color. Nope, not with these, you guys. This is going to be full color embossing paste here. So you can see I just have a tiny little bit because I'm not going to cover the entire trellis stencil. I'm just going to cover a part of it kind of like on a diagonal and then I'm going to die cut the panel once it's completely dry. I made sure to clean the Nouveau spatula with a baby wipe in between colors and I'm just going to use that to put the embossing paste right over the stencil and this is a Nina Classic Crest Solar White panel underneath. I started with the emerald paste and then I'll move on to the midnight violet and I'll make sure that the two colors mix in the center. I'm not looking for complete coverage and I don't want all of the squares to be even. Peeled off the stencil and then I let this dry completely before die cutting it with one of the new Terrific Tags dies. These are awesome you guys, I love them. So I'm just gonna put a coffee filter in between the die and the panel to make sure I don't get any paste on my die. And then I'm going to peel off this coffee filter and it does leave a few fibers on it. You'll see it in the close-ups um, when I show you at the end of this footage. And I don't mind it. I kind of like it. I, I, I could have rubbed it with my finger to get it all off, but I kind of liked it there. So I'm going to use Label Love stamp set and I've just cut a piece of Nina Classic Crest Solar White into a small square. I'm going to stamp this in obsidian pigment ink. And I set them up so that it would look like a diamond because I wanted to match this diamond pattern we have going on with the trellis. And I'm going to let this hang off the side of the tag just to add a little bit more interest to this piece. And I'll thread through a piece of black twine to finish off this tag. These colors remind me so much of Mardi Gras. If I'd had any gold in there, it would have been just like Mardi Gras. There you can see some of the fibers from the coffee filter. Again, they rub off really easily, but I kind of liked that extra texture there. So totally up to you. Okay, moving on to the Mountain Scene stencil card. This is actually my favorite of the bunch, and I created this card while that embossing paste was drying from the last card. So I have sprayed this with some pixie spray and that is really important you guys um, with any of the projects that I did today aside from the trellis one the tag that we just did I sprayed them with pixie spray to make sure that it was adhered well to the card panel. Um, that's really important especially if you're doing this watercolor technique because otherwise your watercolor is just going to seep underneath the stencil. The pixie spray will help prevent that. So I have Lava Rock watercolor brush marker here, and I'm putting on, um, a, I want a pretty dark uh, coating of this. So you can see that I've tapped it on with a number 12 round brush here, and then I'm gonna go direct ink to paper directly with the watercolor brush because I wanna make sure it's good and dark. Now, the watercolor is only going to go where the paper is wet, so if you're careful when you peel this off, you're gonna retain a perfect mountainside here. Now. Normally, I would let this air dry, but I didn't have time for that. So I went ahead and dried it with my heat tool. Keep your heat tool about six inches away so it doesn't warp your paper and your paper stays nice and flat. Here you can see I didn't press down my stencil very well, so I got a little seepage under there. Totally not a problem though, because again, it's staying within that wet area that I had from the previous part of the stencil and so not a problem at all. It just adds to the character of that mountain. Here I've gone ahead and positioned my trees down at the bottom and I'm going to do several layers of these trees. I wanted a couple different tones of color so I have desert night and moss watercolor brush markers here and I'm just adding a bunch of that color. So same thing, I'm gonna peel this off. In between each one of these, I am drying it with my heat tool. Um, I've laid it down again. I've made sure I've pressed it down nice and firmly so they don't get any seepage. And I'm re-wetting the bottom and that's just a wet paintbrush. There was no pigment on it at that point. And I'm just going to keep adding color, you guys. Um, you can do this as many times as you like depending upon how dense of a forest you want to have in front of your mountains. Um, I think it's a good idea to make sure that your mountains extend kind of 
over the edge of the mountaintop. Um, it just adds a little more depth to your card and then kind of vary the concentration or saturation of your watercolor pigments as well. That's gonna give you a different look. You can see that I went really dark there with the moss. I'm gonna dry that a bit. I'll add a few more trees in the forefront and then I'm gonna add just a little bit more of the tree line to that area that I just did. So these are pretty much full pigment. There's barely any water on my brush there. I wanted that super dark. And then here, I'm just adding a little bit of freehand trees. I'll use my stencil. I don't have it adhered down. I'm just kind of holding it in place. I'm gonna add a little bit more moss and add some additional depth right in this area here, just so it looks like we have several different lines of trees in this forest. I'll add some splatter with the lava rock, and it was a little too dark for me. I wish I had um, dulled it down a little bit. So I'm just gonna use a baby wipe and just sop up some of that color so it's a little bit lighter. It was really risky of me to do that, you guys, because you can see that that's totally not a clean baby wipe. Um, but I went with it, living on the edge. And then I have the Wonderlust stamp set here, which I thought the sentiments were perfect for this stencil. I chose Not All Who Wander Are Lost by Tolkien. And I love how all of these colors just blended together. I love the watercolor look of this, and it was so easy to do with the stencil, you guys. I hope that Altenew comes out with more of these scene stencils, and I have a feeling they might, because I don't know if you noticed, but they started out coming out with some little critter stamp sets also. Along with this release is a cloud stencil, which I'm also really excited to use. I decided not to use it here because I was a little bit nervous that I was gonna mess up this card. I'll have a link to my blog post down below so you can hop along with us. And I wanna apologize for the quality of my video footage. I'm not sure what was going on, but I wonder if it, my autofocus just wasn't working. So I'm sorry that the footage today was a little bit grainy. Thanks so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing liking and ringing that bell so you don't miss any new inspiration. Here's a couple more videos for you before you leave and I'll see you real soon.